Okay, good evening everybody and thank you for taking the time to join us this evening to attend this virtual briefing um, for the Swim Wales Challenge Series incorporating lots of different events including the Swim Wales National Championships, the Masters Championships and we've got the Challenge Series 1, 3 and 5k along with the relay as well. So thanks for taking the time, this is just an important briefing to kind of check over the safety, the running of the day um, and bits and pieces like that. So. I'm Verity, I'm from Swim Wales. I am the event manager of the event coming up on Saturday. Um, and I'll introduce you to Paul Kendall as well, who will be the lead on this from an officials angle and a technical director angle. So what we're gonna go through today um, is just a bit of housekeeping. If you've got any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box um, and we'll pick them up. If we can just keep ourselves on mute so there's not any background noise from anybody else um, and then we'll answer the questions at the end as we go through but what wouldn't take a huge amount of your time this evening um, just to go through the safeties. So we'll do our introductions, our timeline, site information, safety, race prep information, course details, um, what to do in an emergency and then any questions at the end. Um, so just a quick agenda, you'll be pleased to hear you won't be hearing my voice for the entire presentation, we will pass over to Paul in a little while as well. So like I said, I'm Verity Cook, I'm the event manager, I'm running this on behalf of Swim Wales, and on the day there will be more Swim Wales staff present as well. Our lead referee is Paul Kendall, um, and he will be joined by a team of eight other officials as well that will be helping run the day and make sure you're safe and complying with the rules as well. We also have Ray Jupp, who is also on the call, and he will be the safety officer for the day. So he will be responsible for the safety of everybody at the event and making sure weather conditions, water conditions, all those sorts of things are good for us to get in and participate in this event. So the site information, so we're going to Bala Lake, we're heading up to North Wales, which makes a nice change for those of us in Wales, we tend to base more down the south. Um, it's a beautiful location um, and we have been there before to run an open water event, albeit pre-pandemic. Um, so I think we were talking about it being 2019 was the last time we were up there hosting this event. Um, it's easy enough to get to, um, preferred access tends to be through the A50 and then the A49 but follow Google Maps, um, you'll get there pretty straightforward. Ballard Town Centre, um, it's just a little high street, it's lovely. And then there's a car park, which I'll show you in a second where we're gonna be based. On site, there are toilets and there is close to um, the car park as well, a small cafe that does hot food and drink options. But if you take a little stroll, only five minutes away, um, you hit the Ballard High Street and there's plenty of pubs, cafes, and a few little shops. So do take a wander up there because it is really lovely. Um, on the site we're not going to have a designated coach or spectators area so this lake is open to the general public on the day and it won't just be exclusive access for this event so we've not cordoned off an area but there will be plenty of space along the foreshore for you to be able to spectate the race and kind of see everything from multiple locations so there's not a problem there Swimmers can only access the race area. So when we arrive at site, there'll be an area to collect your um, registration packs, which will include information we'll go on to in a second. And then we'll have a corn and off area where swimmers will enter the water and only swimmers are allowed in that area. So no coaches or spectators will be allowed in that section. So Bala Lake car parking. So this is the main road in this little road here in the yellow. Um, and that's you'll either come down from the high street, which is up this way towards the north of this map, or you'll come in from the south. The turn in for the car park is here, and then there is large car parking space all the way down here. Car parking is £6 for the day, and it can be paid cash or card um, through the machines that are there. Again, this car parking isn't going to be exclusively for us, so there will be other members of the public and users there as well. So if these car parks at the bottom are kind of full, then we are able to use the Leisure Centre car park up here. This section down here where it says event staff in the green, um, there will be vehicles down here, but these are purely for the event staff. So they'll be for the water safety guys, the timing guys and things like that. So please don't park down here. Um, but this will be where our registration area is. So you can come down, obviously, more than welcome, and that will be where you're getting in the water, but no vehicles from yours should be down here. 
you do need to display your car parking ticket. Um, they do have wardens going around. Um, so please make sure you've got your car parking covered there. So timeline of the day, um, registration will open from eight o'clock where you can come and collect your registration packs and there we'll be checking off that you attended this briefing, which will have a list of names, so that's fine. We've then got all our multiple races across the day. So our first race of the day is what we're calling age group, which is the Swim Wales National Championships. So that's those age group races for your 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then 18 pluses over a variety of distances. Um, so each age group is swimming a different distance. So um, 1K, 3K and 5K. Um, so you'll be ready for that. Your acclimatization is nine into quarter past nine, and then your race start will be at nine, half past nine. We then move on to the GB Masters event or the British Masters event, um, where there's a 3K race going on for all of you guys. Your acclimatization, if you wish to, will be at 11.15 to 11.30, with your race starting at 11.45 for the 3K for the GB Masters. We then will have our open challenge series race um, again across a variety of distances, one, three and 5k. Um, our climatization there is half one to 145 with a race start of two. Registration will then close at 2.30 just before our relay. So by then you'll all um, have either started swimming or you'll have your relay just coming up. So registration will close at half past two. Our relays will then take place um, at 3.45 until four o'clock for the acclimatization. And then three um, at 4.15 will start the race. And that is a four person relay across that. So that's our timeline of events there. Um, it is available on the Swim Wales website. I sent you the link in the information, um, including it, this Zoom link. Um, so if you want to see that, you can have a look there and I will share the recording of this. So if you need to see the timeline again, you will be able to. Um, safety, we've got Hope Philby um, as course safety lead and she'll be on the water in a safety boat. And then we will have 10 paddlers on kayaks um, in the water with you and two power boats where we will have referees on them as well. Um, on the evacuation boat, hope will be so there'll be three power boats 10 paddlers um to watch over your safety on the race day um so if there's any problems paul will cover this in a minute um we have suitable number of watercraft to kind of be able to get you out of water we've got acute medics providing our medical cover um and geo and nikki will be there as well so we have on-site paramedics if anybody does require first aid attention they will be on site with a paramedic um, ambulance as well Next, I'm going to hand over to Paul um, and he's going to talk through to you the bit more of the technical aspects of the day um, and starting off on the course plan. Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for being here tonight. And I appreciate that uh, sometimes it's a bit hard to do these messages on, on, online. Um, the course we got on Saturday is a rectangular course laid down the north side of the lake. Hopefully, if there's any wind coming down the lake, the waves will be less affected there so you'll have a, a smoother swim. The course is a rectangular course with a mark the corners by large yellow boys. Um, there will be other boys on the route um, but you could ignore those for the races as they are until you get to the relay so don't worry about that until the other boys until the, the relay. Um, we might have on the day to adjust the course to accommodate where there might be moored craft or other hazards in the water. So if there's a slight change to the shape of the course from what you see today, that's the reason behind it. Um, but as I say, all other course boys, apart from the other ones you can, can ignore during the course of this particular swim, unless uh, um, we've told you otherwise. Next slide, please. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so start and finish. All the events will be starting from in the water. You'll enter the, um, the, the water in the top part of the course um, that you see here. Make your way out to in front of where the right-hand boy is. And there's a invisible start line between the right-hand boy and where the referee's craft will be on the water. Um, once you're into the line, we'll swim you off in the direction of the course. It's an anti-clockwise course. 
and uh, you can pass either side of turn four at the start only. Um, when it comes back to the finish, you'll have to enter into the finish funnel by the, between the two marking boys that will be there. We'll cover that later. So depending on which particular race you're doing, it's either going to be a one lap for the 1K course, two laps for a 2K course, and so on up to 5K. Um, the yellow boys, as I said, are there to be the course markers for you to follow and turn around. And you turn these with your left shoulder to the boy. Um, go around the course as many times as your race lap requires. So if you're doing a 2K swim, it's two laps. As I said, 5K swim, it's five laps. And only at the start of your race can you pass the turn four boy, that's the one closest to where the finish is, on either side if it's necessary. At all other times, when you turn at turn four, you must go around the boy with your left shoulder to the boy. For those of you who are going to compete in the relay swim, quite an exciting event this, the course is going to be shortened down to 500 metres and your start is going to be in approximately the same place, but the handovers between the incoming and outgoing swimmer in the sort of two, three and four swimmers location is going to be from within the finish funnel boys. Um, when the incoming swimmer from the lap ahead comes in, you must hand over to the next person in the, in the finish funnel. And then the last person in the team, when they finish their lap, they swim through into the swim through finish as if you were doing a normal finish for a race and reach up and touch the boy, uh, the finish burner. So for the relay, it's four laps of the 500 meter course, handovers taking place between the finish final entrance boys. And when you do the handover, it's got to be visible to those on the land who are overseeing such things. So when you come in, incoming swimmer, you must touch the outgoing swimmer between their forearm and their hand above the water in a place where the referee or the course officials can see you do this. So that's going to be between the tip of your fingers and your elbow. That's what we want to be able to see, visibility. Um, each of you does one lap of the course. Again, just like in the other races, it's an anti-clockwise direction for swim, turning all the boys, which are going to be yellow for turn three, but the other two turns are going to be white. So you've got a start, a white boy, turn a white boy, turn a yellow boy, and then to the finish funnel. Um, if it needs to be, we might have to change the course the uh, boy colours on the day, but we will brief that at the time. Part of the race preparations that we require you to do before you come to Bala is to ensure that you're not going to injure anybody else who's going to be on the water with you. So to that end, we ask that you all make sure that your fingernails and toenails have been trimmed so that when you look from the front of your, from your hand, you can't see the nails over the top, so they're nicely smoothed down, as you see in a picture in front of you. Um, on the day, we ask that you remove rings and watches or other forms of jewellery that might cause an injury to yourself or to others if they come into contact with it. So that's earrings, um, some sort of piercings. They're all things that can cause injury if you feel that they could scratch somebody then they need to come out, please. If you can't get a wedding band off because it's too tight for you to do so, then perhaps tape over it so it stays on your hand and doesn't come off once your fingers get cold. One thing you won't be able to wear are any sort of pacing devices or GPS trackers or other forms of um, aid to give you a pace in the water. So no earpieces, I'm afraid. Now, the water temperature at Bala today is um, between 16 and 18 degrees. We've no idea what the weather's going to be like on the day, but at that temperature, it's very likely that wetsuits are going to be required. Um, so please, before you come to Bala, make sure your wetsuit is suitable. We're not asking that they are bad as being FINA registered, but we do ask that they are compliant with the spirit of the FINA 
wetsuit rules. So um, nothing too bulky would be one of my things I'd like to say. No um, enhancements to the arms that give a better catch or pull. And um, no off, the, no open shoulders. Um, you want a, a polo shirt style arm if you have a, a short arm and um, you can, they must go below the knee. If you're uncertain, please um, send me an link to your wetsuit and I'll have a look at it. If we're allowed to have wet, uh, costumes because the water temperature is warm enough, um, so if it's 18 degrees or above, you have the option to wear a wetsuit or a costume. If it's 20 degrees or above, it's going to be costumes only in the water. So please ensure that your costume and your wetsuit comply with the um, requirements that you see on the screen in front of you. So not cover the neck or extend past the shoulders or past the ankle or costumes, but the wetsuits are slightly different, of course. No tri suits, please. Um, and if it's a costume, no zip suits required, uh, admitted, sorry. One of, the question, one of the questions we often asked is, can they apply um, sunscreen or gels to the, prevent chafing? Yes, you can, but please do not put anything on your skin until after you've had yourself marked up, if you're having a marking on your skin, um, so that we have the opportunity for the markings to actually stay attached to your skin, otherwise they'll just float off when you get in the water. So if we are wearing wetsuits and we're putting transfers onto your wetsuit, then you need to put your wetsuit on before you apply the transfer to it. Otherwise, when you do put yourself in your wetsuit, it's just gonna break up because you're stretching the wetsuit. Um, the numbers that you're being given are gonna be a transfer that must be applied in a clean and dry surface. Um, oil free, I should say, clean, dry, oil free surface. You'll get the wet transfer wet when it goes on and it'll dry on your wetsuit. There are medias that will take it off afterwards. Don't worry about that, please. For wetsuits or if you're in a costume, we require that you apply your numbers in the way that you see in the picture. So it's across the back of each shoulder it's down at the side of each arm, starting at the top of the shoulder, and then on the back of your hand in a way such that when you raise your hand up, you can read the number when you look at it. The hats will be numbered as well, and you make sure that the number you apply, if we're applying them yourself, are on the side of the hat. And whilst we're on the subject of hats, you're allowed to wear two hats for this event. The hat that we provide for the event must be the outer one, and it must be able to be to stay on throughout the rest because that's part of the safety process. If we're wearing wetsuits, then there are some of you that have asked if you could wear a neoprene hat. As there are no current FINA directions over the material of the hat that I could find, if we're wearing a wetsuit, I am prepared for you to have a neoprene hat beneath the hat that we provide you. That's enough on that at the time being. If you have any further questions, we'll cover it later. The way that we will be timing you is twofold. We'll issue you with a transponder, which you must wear on your wrist. And this is used to help register your time and your position at the finish when you come through. It's an important part of the race equipment, so you must ensure that it's securely attached before you enter the water. And it's likely that you will only have one transponder to wear on the day. So please ensure that this is put on your dominant arm, as that is the arm that I expect you would use to reach up and touch the finish when you come through. And I must, at this point, make it very clear to you that if you fail to touch the finish at the end of the race, then your time is not recorded, you will go, get no place and you would be disqualified. You must touch the finish 
at the end of your race. Just the, on, sorry, Paul, just on those um, transponders and wristbands you're getting, we do need those to be returned at the end of the race so that you'll be given the timing chip on a neoprene wristband. The neoprene wristband needs to come back with the timing chip when you come out of the water. Thank you, sorry. That's okay. Um, other things you need to consider is that the route from the shore into the water is over uneven surface. There are rocks beneath the surface that you need to be wary of, and there are rocks on the shore, foreshore. So please have footwear that you can take off when you get to the water, but be aware that under the water, there's like to be an uneven surface. So the sooner you can get into a swimming uh, position rather than walking position, the better for yourselves. Now, acclimatization, we're allowing you to have a 15 minute window of opportunity to have the opportunity to get in the water. Um, but given the numbers of swimmers, we're going to limit the number in the water at any one time to 20. Um, five minutes, we ask that it should be sufficient for you to get the feel of the water. And then we'll have you out at the end of that 15 minute window, ready for us to start the next part of the race preparation. Um, the start of the race will follow a familiar format to majority of you. There'll be a 15 minute warning, a 10 minute and a five minute warning. And then at the five minute point to count down is going to be one minute intervals. What we expect you to do is at the 15 minute point, ensure that you've got all your race attire available to you and necessarily put it on. So that's your transponders on, getting your hat ready, putting it on, making yourself comfortable, making sure you've got the right costume on, and if necessary, pre-positioning your um, footwear so you've got that ready to go. At 10 minutes to go, we're going to then assemble you at the foreshore, and we'll line you up for a roll call and also make sure that you're in numbered order from your hat number, and we'll give you a tally band to wear during the course of the swim. This is our secondary means of making sure we know who's gone in the water. And also when you come back out, because you'll be handing the Taliban back to make sure you've got out safely. You can wear this Taliban either on your wrist or your ankle, but it must be accessible when you leave the water. So please don't put it high up underneath a sleeve or a leg. At the five minute point, We'll line you up at the edge of the water, again, remaining in number order to make sure that we know who you are, and then you'll be invited then to enter the water and move out to the start line. What we would like you to do when you enter the water is not to dilly-dally near the foreshore, because we have to try and keep the ones behind you in line. Please try and take up the start line in a um, swift amount of time. So I said, when you're invited to enter the water, do so promptly. Once in the water, ensure that you get yourself fully submerged, including your face, before you reach the start line. This is to ensure that if you haven't taken the advantage to become acclimatized during that point in time when we allowed you in, that you have at least sampled what the water feels like before you start the swim. If once you've got in the water though, you suddenly feel that it's not for you, that's not a problem. Please turn around and come back out and make us aware that you are doing so. See the clerk of the course and hand back your um, tally band and your transponder. If you wanted to retire during the rest of the race, we'll cover that later. So start of the race, uh, you move out from the shore to the point between the right hand funnel entrance boy and the referee's boat. And the starter is going to be located on the um, breakwater that you can see at the top of the picture. There's a uh, starting process I'll describe in a moment, but immediately after starting, the first turn boy, turn four, you can pass on either side if the course is such that you feel you need to. After that, Every time you reach to turn four, if you're going for a second or subsequent lap, 
you must go around turn four with your left hand shoulder to the turn boy. So start procedure, line up between the referee's boat and the funnel. The referee will bring the race to order by blowing the whistle and they'll raise a flag to indicate that the race is about to be brought to order and under their control. Once you've reached a satisfactory order along the invisible line between the referee's boat and the funnel boy, and the referee will marshal you, marshal you by waving their flag and discussing where he wants you or where she wants you to be. The referee will then hand over it to the starter by lowering their flag and pointing it towards the breakwater where the starter is. When they're handed the start, the starter will raise their flag. So at this point, you need to be looking at the breakwater if you're going to be looking anywhere. When they're satisfied that you're all ready, they will shout out the command to take your marks. And then when they are ready, they will rapidly lower their flag and sound an air horn to initiate the start. Now the finish. At the end of your required number of laps, you must approach the finish by swimming through between the two entrance boys that are going to be yellow pencil boys at this moment in time. If you miss the entrance boys and try and come in over either the yellow rope or the red rope, you would be disqualified. You must come to the finish through the entrance funnel uh, between the two boys. Swim to the swim through finish, which is a white banner with the word finish in black, and then reach up and touch the banner and then continue out the other side. Please do not stop once you get to the finish, because if there's people racing in behind you, they're just going to pile into the back of you. Reach up, touch and swim on. That's what you have to do, I'm afraid. So rounding turn three at the end of your final lap, as I just said, you must enter the finish between two marker boys, remain between the boundary ropes until you finish. If you miss the entrance, you can't enter from the side, you must go back and go back through the front where the two marker boys are, and you must touch the banner as you pass underneath it. Using your arm with a transponder, hand your tail band and the transponder back when you get out the other side. So the referees aren't just out there to watch you swim. They're also hopefully going to be doing some policing uh, and looking out for anybody in need of uh, rescuing. Uh, we are using FINA rules in the water and you've got FINA qualified officials on the water watching you. We're asking that you maintain separation throughout the race. So if you start to find that you're interacting by interlocking your arms with the swimmer next door to you, try and give yourselves a bit of space. We know it does happen that you're swimming shoulder to shoulder, and that's quite acceptable. But if you're starting to become all tangled up, then we will take action to ask you to separate out. If the referee whistles, please glance up and look at them and follow their instructions. Although most contact between swimmers is unintentional, there are occasions when some people don't really play the game and it's unfair that we let them get away with it. So we will take action if we feel that's the case. Obviously we're looking out for a number of different infringements. Um, if you're impeding the swimmer next to you, pushing them under, pulling them back, that sort of thing, then we'll take action. If you're hitting them that's deliberate, we'll definitely take action. Um, indirect action, if you are swimming too close, inter interlocking your arms, but you're not following the referee's um, commands, then we can also take action then because you're not following the safety rules that we're trying to imply. So what are we going to show you if we need to have any sort of interaction with you? The most common indication you'll get from the referee is a separating uh, gesture where the arms start between the referee's chest and then they widen out in a spreading motion. 
if the whistling from the referee is accompanied by a flag and a board with a number on, you need to determine if that's your number or not. If they're showing a yellow flag, you're getting a warning. You only get the one warning. If you're shown a red flag, then I'm afraid you're being disqualified for some infringement. And at that point, your race is over and you'll be required to leave the water by getting into one of the rescue craft. There are time durations for the swim. And this is from the start of the race, not from the time of a first person home. If you've not completed your swim within the duration allowed for your race, then the referee may instruct you that you are out of time. And they will do this by giving you the timeout single signal that you can see in front of you. If you're given the timeout signal, then depending on where you are on the course, you may be invited to leave the water by the safety boat, or you may be allowed to swim to the exit if it's practical to do so. But in either case, if you've been given the time out, you will not get a position at the end of the race. So the durations for the races are shown below. For the age group swims, the 2K, the 3K and the 5K are 45 minutes, 60 minutes and 90 minutes respectively. In the open competition, the 1K, the 3K and, 5, and 4K, uh, Verity, is it 4K or 5K? 5K. 5K. So we have a typo over here. So 1, 3, and 5K. That's 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and 90 minutes for that. For the GB Masters, you have 75 minutes to complete your 3K. So sometimes people find that they get into some sort of difficulty they are tired, they've swallowed too much water, whatever, and they need to stop. If you need to stop or wish to stop, we will recover you from the water if uh, that's needed. Turn onto your back, please, so that you're floating and wave your arm, just one arm, above your body to attract attention. There are, as you saw at the start of this presentation, a number of paddlers in boats that will be watching over the swim to ensure that they can spot anybody who needs help. They'll come to your assistance and then they will move you off the swim line so it's safe for powered craft to come to your aid and pick you up and bring you back to the start. Um, obviously, if you find that you're getting tired but you want to retire at the end of a lap, that's perfectly acceptable as well. You don't have to be collected out of the water by the race craft. Um, please just get out at any of your lap, but please do so by coming to the side of the finish and not swimming through the funnel and through the finish gate. Either way, when you get out of the water, whether it's come back by a safety craft or by your own action because you've retired, you must report to the clerk of the course, hand back your tally band and your transponder. Should there be a need for us to take action because of a change in the weather conditions, the race may have to be stopped. Or if before the start of the race, we feel that it's unsafe for us to do the full distance, we might shorten the course. So you either go around a shorter course more times or you do less number of laps. In the event that there's a thunderstorm though, the race is going to be completely abandoned and we'll take all the swimmers off the water. In the event that we need to abandon the race, you'll be made very clear the fact that we are asking you to do so because we'll be whistling or blowing air horns um, in a series of five blasts for the two second duration, and then we'll repeat that after 10 to 15 seconds. And the referee's flags will be raised up and they'll be in a cross formation. So they'll be doing whistling with one hand and flags with the other and holding onto the boat with their legs, no doubt. In the event that we are calling the race off, we will recover you from the water with the safety craft and take you back to the finish. But we will do so by extracting those who are furthest from the finish to start with. All the other people will be required to make their way or start making their way back to the finish and we'll pick them up as we can.
Just uh, a word of caution. This is a uh, open water event. Um, there's always a small possibility of there being some form of waterborne infection that you might take away with you. So what we ask is when you leave the water at your earliest opportunity, please take a shower. And as a minimum, please don't consume anything without cleaning your hands first. Um, there should be hand gel available within the swimmer's preparation area for you to do so. Okay, thank you very much for that, Paul. Um, on the website as well, we have placed your race registration numbers. Um, so when you come to registration, um, please just say the event you're in and your race registration number, and you will be given an envelope that contains um, a hat, your time and chip, and your tattoos. Okay, right. I can see we've got some questions in the chat, so we'll just go through these. Um, the latest time masters can register um, will be at the start of your acclimatization time. So we'll need to know who is there. Um, so off the top of my head, I can't remember what time your registration is. So let's pop back to the timeline. Okay, so I can see here that um, there's a number of things here. Do the swimmers stay in the water to start the race? Uh, you'll be walking into the water ahead of the race and you'll then line up in the water whilst treading water, maybe standing on the bottom. I don't know how deep the water might be where the start is yet, um, but I suspect you'll be treading water and then swimming away from the start line that's between the referee's boat and the Finnish boy's right hand, right, hand, uh, right hand funnel boy. What do we need to touch at the finish? The white banner that stretched out five meters wide at the head of the funnel. So you'll go through two yellow boys. There's a yellow rope floating and a red rope floating either side of the, uh, the Finnish funnel leading you down to a floating finish, which is um, a white uh, fabric banner that's... Oh, well, all right. It's a white banner, and you reach up and touch the banner. It's approximately arm length above the water. Um, for a young swimmer, you'll have no difficulty in reaching it. Uh, for the 3K Masters, uh, men are starting first and then the women are starting second, five minutes after. Um, on, yeah. the, okay, I'm on the age groups and challenge events, the 5K swimmers will be starting first. And then five minutes later, the 3K and the other distance, whether it's the... Um, the 1K or the, the 2K, depending on the age group or challenge, will be starting together. So there'll be two starts for each of the separate races going into the water, if you like. So the age groups have a 5K start and then a combined three and two. The masters will be having a men's start and then a women's start. And the challenge series will have a 5K start and then the um, 3k and 1k. Yes, I've noticed the error as well, so I'll be in touch and give you a new number. Don't worry, we'll put you in the right race. <laughs> um, can we wear earplugs? Yes, you can wear earplugs. There is no problem about wearing earplugs. The Ma only thing you're not allowed to have are those things that have got a um, an audio book or whatever attached to it as well. Oh, do you see the one about um, can you wear neoprene socks? No socks. No. <laughs> I'm not there yet, Jean. Okay. Um, Masters starting. Hopefully we covered that off then with Paul's explanation there. Um how how they're we'll drop, um how they're starting. Um what happens if the water temperature is below 16 degrees? Um that's a very good question. Yeah. In theory, we would not be allowed to run the swim under FINA rules. Mm -hmm. 
However, it's not in the Olympics and it's not the World Championships. If you're in Scotland, they'd allow you to swim down to 14 degrees. I will discuss this with the safety officer and the safety team on the day, and it will very much depend on what the weather above the water is, as much as what the water temperature is, whether we make a decision to swim or not, if it's 15.9 or if it's just 16. Uh, I'm not going to say I can definitely have a swim at the moment, or it will be definitely off. I would try my best to take into account the safety implications on the day, but it will very much depend on what the weather is like uh, when we get there. The weather forecast that I've looked at today for the long range weather forecast for the area is such that although for the next day or so there's going to be a um, likelihood of increasing wind and um, rain, the actual air temperature is not dropping to a great low um, and by the time it gets back to Friday and Saturday, the, the wind speeds are likely to have dissipated tremendously and uh, the wind direction um, is not going to look like coming down the lake. That's the theory at the moment. Um, between now and then, as I say, things might change with the weather, but I've got no idea what's going to happen. I feel at the present time that we will have a swim. Uh, that's all I can say. A couple of questions about if you've been changed to the correct races. So I've been through all the emails in the inboxes to myself and to Swim Wales's events and I've done any alterations. So if you can just go on to the Swim Wales website, um, look for events, Swim Wales Challenge Series, the updated list is there. So if you could just check that. But if you have emailed in, then the changes have been done. Okay. Another one about how we're starting. So hopefully that was covered off already. Um, what is the time for the 3K Challenge Series start? Um, that was here yeah, for your information. Will the age groups been starting together? Hopefully that's already been covered off as well. All the masters men's together. Yep, again, hopefully that's all been covered up again. Do the challenges? Yep. So all races on the day will be getting timed electronically all the way through to the relays. Um, temperatures for wetsuits that was covered off in the presentation, Lucy. I'll, I'll cover it again though, just to make it clear. Yeah. Um, under the feet of rule, no wetsuits worn if it's twenty degrees or above. West wetsuits or costumes are. Uh, the requirement of it's 18 degrees or above till 20. And it's supposed to be wet suits only can be worn if it's below 18 degrees. Um, again, I understand the reluctance, especially amongst the masters community of wearing a wet suit. And um, I'm with that as well. <laughs> I, I don't like wearing, I don't have a wet suit in fact, because I haven't competed in, a, in a, an event for ages now. Um, Perfect. Um, that's all the questions that are in the chat that we've been through. Is there anything anybody would like covering off that hasn't been covered off? Um, please feel free to chuck it in the chat box now or come off mute. Verity, can I just ask, is it possible for you to send me this PowerPoint? Yeah, oh, of course, that. I'll send the recording link out as well. So that's fine, yeah. no problem. Thank you, thank you. Do, oh, there's some coming in now. Um, how much does it matter if we don't have a FINA wetsuit? Like Paul said, it, we're not sticking to FINA rules 100%, just as long as it's within the nature of the sport. So nothing with any major enhancements or anything like that. If you want to send your details about your wetsuit across, we can have a look at it. Do numbers go on the wetsuit? Yes, they do. Um, we've got special wet white removers as well, so they come off as well. Um, is there a contact number for the day? Yes, my phone number is available. Um, I'm sure you've probably had it already in the footer of an email. Um, if you check back there, my mobile number is on that. You'll get confirmation about wetsuit or non-wetsuit on the day. That decision can't be made before because we don't know what the weather will be doing or the temperature conditions beforehand. 
are the time and chips those chunky ones in the picture um let me see if i can find the picture and see which ones you're talking about um they're the ones that are used in triathlon so they're the same as that on a neoprene strip is this the picture yeah so that's the time and chips there actually those are fairly flat compared to some i've seen yeah <laughs> um so they are looking a bit like that Okay, any more questions? So if you've been changed in terms of you were entered into the wrong race, um, so far everybody that's changed has got a hat, and a ta a hat and a tattoo um, because I've managed to find some in store, so don't worry about it. Those that have changed, um, you've got tattoos and hat numbers, they just won't be in the sequence of orders. So say the majority of people are 1 to 20 and your ratio could be 121 or 210. Um, it's just whatever we've had in the cupboard leftovers. Any more questions before we wrap it up there? Final call. <laughs> Obviously, F at the day, you have another question that comes to mind. Please seek out myself or any of the other officials, and we will endeavour to make sure you had an answer. Don't fear us. We're not there to make life difficult for yourselves. We wanted to make it as easy as possible. We want it to be a good event. Um, I'm confident we'll have a good event, to be honest. Um, it's just a difficult. We can't say for sure what the weather's going to be like or what the water temperatures are going to be like at this point. Perfect. Thank you, Paul, for your time and delivering this tonight with me. Um, appreciate that. And thank you all for joining us um, and listening to this briefing. Like Paul says, do please ask any questions on the day or beforehand via email if you do have any pressing questions. Um, and I will share this link with you as well. Um, so if you have any questions, you can refer back to it. Yep, there are first aiders on site. We've got two of them there with a ambulance as well. Thank you guys, um, feel free to jump off now. Thanks for your time this evening. Ray, did you have questions you wanted to discuss after the meeting? But you are on mute. <laughs>